so we've learned quite a lot and better understand you know the nature of the aquifer and understanding better how the aquifer responds to recharge vents, say when it rains a lot and under drought. Over the years, dye tracing has provided critical information for groundwater management protection and planning. The district recently assisted the city of Austin in a dye tracing study. So our typical dye trace would involve finding a sinkhole and ideally one that's in a creek bed because then we have water that could be flowing in wet times and we put dye in that water and then see how it moves to the aquifer. If there's no water, we need water to move the dyes. So we might get water from a, a fire truck or from a fire hose to flush the dye in to make sure that it goes into the ground and hopefully getting to the aquifer. And at that point, it'll flow with the natural flow of the aquifer. And we've determined the actual locations of some of the pathways by seeing which wells are hit along the way as that dye goes from the injection point, say like a cave, to you know, say to Barton Springs. And we also time that so we can see, here's when we injected the water and we're looking closely, see almost hour by hour what time that dye arrives at the receptor point again, like Barton Springs or Cold Springs. These dye traces started in the late 90s when the district teamed up with the city of Austin to better understand how water is moving through the aquifer. We had some traces that were done on Onion Creek in which dye was injected into a cave with water from Onion Creek flowing into the ground and it came out in Barton Springs within about two and a half days. And that's traveling a distance of 18 miles. So that's going very fast. You can imagine the conduits and caves and the subsurface that allow for that to happen, almost like a large pipe just connecting injection point to, to the springs. With slower moving water, it can take weeks for the dye to reach Barton Springs. But by the time it reaches the springs, you won't see much. And when you first inject it into some water, say if you're injecting into a stream, you know that stream is bright colors. It could be green or, or yellows or even red initially, but as it disperses, you know, downstream, it'll weaken some. But when we're putting it into a cave, well, no one really sees that colored water. And, and most likely, by the time it reaches a well or the springs, we don't see that color anymore. And that's ideal. We don't need to see the color. We take samples of that water, send it to a lab or analyze it ourselves in our own lab. And that, those, those instruments for, for doing the, that dye tracing are extremely sensitive. We can pick up parts per billion of these organic dyes and know, did that dye make it to this point or not? The knowledge gained from dye trace studies is invaluable when it comes to protecting the aquifer. And one thing in particular we look at closely with these dye traces is understanding the pathway. So if we actually had a chemical spill, say if you think of a diesel truck uh, wiped out on Mopac and that water flowed off the highway and there's caves nearby, we would know pretty much the pathways and time that might take to get to Barton Springs. So we can be better prepared to alert the, you know, the, you know, the first responders, you know, where, where to be looking for these contaminants that could be entering the aquifer. We would notify well owners down gradient of that. So these studies are very important to protecting the aquifer, protecting endangered species at the springs and protecting the source of drinking water for many people.